If you want to be a better driver of the golf ball, hit further and more in play, you probably need to cut out those mistakes that are the most costly with the driver. That's what we're talking about in this video. So we're not going to cover general swing faults that are costly. We're looking at the ones that are more specific to the driver. And when we're looking at costly faults, we have to look at setup because driver is the one club in the bag where for many golfers, the setup just gets out of sync, out of whack. And it's due to where that board is positioned. So there aren't that many golfers who aren't aware or don't understand that the ball should be up in the stance, opposite that lead heel or around about that area. That's perfect. That's where we need it. And we do need it there. But it's what that does to the body. If I take my setup, my tendency has always been to get the shoulders a little open. We're going to cover why that is. But when we look from the face on, I'm going to have the buttons on my shirt a little bit behind my belt. I'm going to have my weight pretty much 50-50. And I'm going to have the club shaft pretty neutral. And then from this angle, we should have all of our alignments matching. Toes, knees, hips, forearms, shoulders and eyes. But because that ball is so far forward and because the grip of the club is so much more to the left of my body, we see this all too often. So when we look at that face on, we don't see that same relationship. Look at the difference in my body angle. I might have over-exaggerated this a little bit, but really funny angles, hips back. I feel a bit more weight on here. And then look at my alignment, really out of sync. Shoulders open, hips open, forearms open. My eye line is more at the left, yet I'm looking down the fairway. Oh, it's just terrible. And the reason it's terrible is because you're often out of sync before you start. It doesn't guarantee a bad drive, but it just makes it so much more difficult to hit a good drive. So let's get that setup sorted. Let's build our stance around the golf ball with that ball nicely forward, but then let's just stand up. Let's place the club slightly to the left of our body. Let's add a little bit of tilt. Let's place the hand on, and then let's tip over the golf ball. Now we start to create some good angles where we've got the relationship we want from face on and our alignment is good from down the line. So that is the first really costly fault that I see with the driver. Secondly, takeaway. People are nervous with the driver, lack of confidence, worried about slicing it into the trees or potentially trying to knock it 15 yards past your playing partners because you're always behind. And what that often relates to is a poor takeaway, a snatchy takeaway, one where we lose a lot of the things that we've hopefully addressed, sorry, created address. So a snatchy takeaway might look like one where the arms get snatched away. Just look at the narrowness of my arms and look at my elbow positions here. Or maybe we see a snatch away where there's a big lateral shift this way, the club stays low to the ground, it goes inside, the shoulders turn flat. All sorts of different move away from the golf ball that I see but they all stem down or kind of boil down to the same thing that the golfer looks nervous, they're snatching the club away and poor things happen. When we look at the best drivers, a little bit of an interesting point here, they're certainly not low and slow. There's an element of speed, there's an element of force, they're trying to generate power and speed. So it's not this slow, gentle move away, there is some force, but they do it in a much better way. They use the body efficiently. So a great way for you to think about this is, this is the key point here. Don't think of the driver head. The driver head will move if you move the other parts of the golf club correctly. Moving the driver head on its own independently is gonna kill your driving. I'm be, I would be thinking about the grip and I'll be trying to move the grip away from the golf ball with a fair bit of speed and a fair bit of force. But I'm doing that with my body. I'm feeling like I'm using my feet and the ground to push away. And what we then get is we get this beautifully wide takeaway where we actually get some pressure shifting into that trail side. We get a really nice move away from the ball where the rotation has started and we've got some energy into the swing early on. That's what I really want you to think about. A great analogy would be to imagine that the driver head is stuck to the ground. So the sole of my club feel like it's stuck to the ground. And to start your swing, you've got to unstick it. So what would I do? I would start here and I would move away this way. I'm feeling like I've got to get that club off the ground early, but I don't do it through a snatch in my hands or a big lunge with my body. I do it by using my body and moving the grip of the club away. The club head just happens to follow. And finally, the most costly downswing mistake is chasing the ball. Reaching for the ball too early, not taking our time to hit it. As we've already said, 
the ball is forward in our stance. And when the ball is forward in our stance, it becomes incredibly easy to turn the shoulders first, which enables us to hit down on the golf ball. We know that we shouldn't hit down on the ball, but very often when we're faced with a drive and the ball is forward, it's what instinctively happens. Because relative to your head, the ball is a long way forward of you. So we want to lunge at it. We want to turn the shoulders, drop the left shoulder to get the club to the ball. And it will, but it'll hit down. It'll cut across, it'll slide across the ball and you will see your golf ball starting somewhere down the middle and probably taking a right turn into those trees. I've spoken about this in, in a recent video talking about some driver keys. The real important thing for the driver is to feel like you're keeping your back to the target for a little bit longer in transition. Still starting with a lower body, but feeling like my back faces the target for a little bit longer. That gives my arms time to work down. And then when I rotate and I accelerate the club, I can hit a lot more from the inside. I can hit a lot more up on the ball and I can basically hit a lot better drives. So I've seen hundreds, if not thousands of golfers who've come to me struggling with this club. Those three faults are almost always present in some form. Maybe one of them, maybe two of them, maybe all three of them. But if you can fix those, you can ultimately hit better drives. Right, a bit of pressure now to see if I can actually hit a good drive after I've just told you what to do. So, I mean, how nice is this tee shot, by the way? Ninth hole, Costa Navarino, this is the Dunes course. Let's see if we can get this one down there. 